And before we get started, Daniel, I need you to explain to the audience why I'm so, I mean, I would say angry and upset with you. You really dropped the ball this week. And I don't mean any offense to our current guests when I say that, although it's going to come across as a little offensive. Of course. <laughs> it's got to. What happened? What did you promise and then not do? Okay, here's I, here's I what I... Be, I can't even be in the room for this. Here's shit. what I promised. Here's the thing. I didn't promise anything. Lars makes declarations and then he uh, expects them to be fulfilled no matter what. <laughs> don't... That sounds like a demand. Don't, don't backpedal politically. I'm not just backpedaling. Tell, no, just tell them what is not happening today. Okay. I will tell you that um, on the last episode, Lars promised to the audience that Cass was going to come on again, mm -hmm. and then he got mad. That no, no, no. Cassidy and myself both decided we were going to read Craigslist singles for an hour, and that was going to be our special episode. It was going to be awesome. And I said, hey, Daniel, when do you want to do that? And then Daniel said, oh, Cassidy's a little busy this week. But you know what? What you don't know. I spoke to Cassidy two days after we recorded that podcast because she left her scarf here and she came over to pick it up. And she was so excited to come do the Craigslist. You fucked me. You fucked the audience. And you fucked Cassidy. Let's get started. <laughs> Cassidy is very flexible. Uh, she, she's okay with hey that. Hey, yo. <laughs> what up? What up? What up? What up? What up? What's up? What up? What up? What up? What up? What's up? Welcome back to What Up, Eugene. I am your host, Lars Feighauser. And this is an exciting one because I didn't announce it last week which would have been a good time because it was episode 20. But this is episode 21. It's our first post-episode 20 episode, which is... This episode's legal to drink. Yeah. Oh, boy. Don't tell anyone about the first 20 episodes. <laughs> I'm joined, as always, this week by my co-host, Dan. What are you doing today, Dan? Um, oh, I had something prepared. You ha I, I Did you? Did you have something it was prepared? In my, it was in my head. Oh, hey, guess what? When I'm driving on 18th, go over 20 miles per hour, please. Thank you. For <laughs> Just had to get that out of my system. Thank you for that, Dan. Okay. Well, uh, I want to do a little bit of, uh, you know me, I like to do the business at the beginning of the show because you, you know what I hate is when I'm listening to a podcast, 99% <clears throat> invisible, and I get to the end of the podcast and there's like five minutes left in the podcast player and it's just bullshit about credits and ads. Like do that at the beginning because then I'll I'll know that there's five more minutes of enjoyment, not five minutes of bullshit. Our producer is, I can't do his yeah, voice. It's uh, too, too radio -y. Radio -y. I'm Roman Mars. This is ninety nine percent invisible. This is the something something fun run. Wait, the media media topia fun fund run. I forget. Oh. <laughs> Hello, beautiful nerds. Uh, anyways, if you're listening anywhere but SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play, where you can, Stitcher and Spreaker, where you can, you will notice because we're recording ahead of time that in between last episode and this episode, there's another episode I'm doing. I don't know what it's called yet because I'm going to produce that tomorrow because that's when it airs. But it's going to be some kind of flashback thing. Basically, all the episodes that are not currently available in the RSS feed, I'm going to start editing them together since we're doing every other week. And every week where we don't record a new one, I'm going to put a like a What Up Eugene classic without any of the copyrighted music. So it'll be kind of a bridge. None of the game show segment. None of the guest intros. But it will have break music because I have a lot more music recorded now because of the other show I do. So if you heard that and you're like, what is this? That's what it is. If you're on SoundCloud, you can listen to the whole episode for free ad free it will always be there but it won't always you know because it's copyright issues it won't always be in google play so that's it we have a guest this week dan oh <clears throat> no way and it's not Cass. <laughs> it's well it is that's let's cheers debatable at let's least. cheers to derek woo me i can't woo. reach him i'm on the far side of the room uh, uh, dink. dink and we're drinking beer we're drinking beer we're drinking uh wait okay derek yeah. Who, who are who are you? I'm Derek. Okay, Derek is, it grew up in that, Eugene. That's it. That's the whoa, a homegrown. Homegrown. It's always guessing. You know what? We Since, like to be referred to as townies. Uh, <laughs> Dan. Yeah. Since that episode, we had that one guy on. I've had two more guests from Michigan on a part of the art. There's so many Michigan. Michi no, there are a Michiganers, Michigans, a lot of Michiganians, a lot of Kansasians, a lot of Vermontians. Yeah, a lot of a lot of Kansasians. Kansasians? I'm not sure what they're called. I don't think it's that. Nope. <laughs> but you, you're a soil man. I, yeah, sure. Homegrown in the community garden. Homegrown in his own soil. Okay, well, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's get into uh... the peer-reviewed beer review. What an excellent intro. What a great intro. And, Daniel, we have Very some... Fine. 
beers today. I was about to say great beers. I don't want to jump any guns. Uh, you brought three flavors, and you brought two each. So we're all just we're all gonna have different flavors throughout the episode. These are leftover from the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Um, it took place at our house, but it I was not present for the Super Bowl. I was and, upstairs. Oh yeah, well I can't blame you. Yeah, I was we have stuff. Pelican Brewing, and I've got Beak Breaker Double IPA. Now, oops, excuse me. Of course, I am a fan of the, the double IPAs whenever I can get them on tap because it's just a little stronger than an IPA. Um, almost twice. We're looking at 9% alcohol by volume, and it's, I mean, it's gross, right? Like, it's incredibly bitter. It's what you expect from a double IPA. It's not bad in that it's a double IPA, but just in that double IPAs are gross. Well, let me just say, <clears throat> all these beers are by Pelican Brewing, but there are three different types of beers here. We have the pre-prohibition cream ale, we have the double IPA, and we have an Irish-style red ale. How come you only said the name of the one you're holding? I said Beak Breaker on mine. We're just going to call oh, it that's double what IPA. Those are the, the fancy names, Pelican. Like mine's called a Kiwanda, but really it's a it calls itself a pre prohibition oh, okay. cream ale. Well, that's a lot. That's a Kiwanda pre prohibition cream ale. That's yeah. too many. That's like a tongue twister. Uh, you know what I'm gonna you know what I'm gonna do with this? Hi, welcome to the to- peer reviewed tongue twister review. I'm gonna set this <laughs> down. I'm gonna set this down because I don't like it at all. Oh, okay, do you want to trade? It could be better. It could be worse. Okay, here you go. Yeah, let's okay. Don't, you don't be offended when I wipe it off. I do, that. I do that for everyone. I want the audience to know the beer I gave Dan was like 70% full, and the one he gave me was like 30% full. So for a guy who didn't like it, he drank a lot. He had to make sure he didn't like it. We have to get through two beers here, man. Oh, oh God, fuck. <laughs> this is so gross. Oh, this is so much better. <laughs> this, one, this is so bad. I can see why the prohibition happened. <laughs> That's the cream ale that happened before they, they prohibited... It's just a lager. It's just like... It, Okay, so some lagers... I guess I hate lager then, because that's yeah. terrible. Well, that's... We need the, like, the cheap like Bud Light, the beers that are like 50 cents a can. Those are all going to be lagers. And we've done... We reviewed one really nice lager on the show, and we thought it was all right. But yeah, basically the deal... Like, it's a lager, but the, the aftertaste is the only part, and it's really strong. So some lagers, like... Derek's if you, dipping in. If you just get like a little bit of that, it's unpleasant, but it's drinkable. This is just the part that I don't like about a lager. It tastes like... If somebody left a Miller High Life overnight from a mm-hmm. party and then woke up and drank it the next day, but also That's like accurate. a little bit of vomit, yeah, like they like, Whoop, yeah, the- exactly, yeah. <laughs> Maybe somebody dropped a cigarette butt in it. <laughs> yes, yeah, it was definitely opened. So people drink this. The uh, wow, the I'm... pre-prohibition cream ale. I would not recommend. Yeah, nope. I, I don't honestly save save your eleven bucks. Probably. I think I have a bottle of wine in here somewhere. I'm going to have to switch. This is nasty. <laughs> so I don't even like double. I don't like IPAs that much. Mm-hmm. This tastes great after having that. Yeah, for sure. I and like I said, I mean it's there's a thing with IPAs which is not always the case but where they a lot a lot of the time can taste similar and double IPAs doubly so cuz really what is it? It's just extremely bitter and hoppy. And that is that. And it's not super pleasant like I said if you're at a bar and you're trying to get kind of drunk you just drink it real fast. But it's accurate to the flavor and it's this is so fucking nasty. The one I have is nasty. What do, how do you feel about these beers, Derek? Um, I like I really actually do like the double IPA, mm-hmm. but it's like one of those beers you can only drink like maybe two of before you have to set it away because yeah. it's so strong. Yeah, it you got so many like, calories, it's, it it's hard to like... I'm not worried about the calories, it's just like, if I drank two of these, mm-hmm. I felt like I would had eaten like three loaves of bread. That's what I mean, yeah, it's like, it, it's so get, fi- calories, filling, yeah, yeah, but... Right, like, you, it's, I always have that problem where I like, I'll try to, I'll buy a six pack of an IPA you know, and have dinner and the beer and try to drink like two beers and I drink like one and a half and I don't get buzzed. And also I'm like, oh, I feel so bloated. Yeah. Why did I, I get why people drink light beers. I think they're bad people, but I get it. If you guys don't mind, I'm going to dip into the third one. The third flavor of three flavors. I do mind, Dan. Just, I'm, I'm going to waterfall it so we can all share it. Oh, thank There's, you. There is another one. Oh yeah. Would you want to, I mean, at the very least you should have a sip. Red ales I like. Red, I've, I've never had a red ale I didn't like. I'm stoked about this because we have three very distinctive flavors going on mm-hmm. here. And I would place this at second place out of these. Wow. You, so you like the double IPA better? Yeah. Weirdly enough. And I, I, I like red ales. I was going to say, that honestly sounds like it's not a very good red ale if you like the double IPA better. Well, to me, this tastes like a very beery red ale. Oh, well, I mean, it's an ale. Beery, like hoppy or malty? Malty. 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 Yeah. It's kind of sweet. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. No, that tastes like... um. Thank you, Derek. 
Yeah. I, I didn't know multi was a way to describe it. Now I do. And now. Yeah, that's I'm going to keep that in mind because that's what I don't like about um like the thicker. Yeah. Like Guinness style or what are those? Uh, the really dark ones. Stouts. stouts. That's why yeah. I don't like about stouts. That doesn't t- taste like a red ale at all. What are you doing, Pelican Brewery? Bastardizing flavors of beers. <laughs> yeah. Except the double IPA was pretty good. No, it's good, but it again, it's Everything not. Everything else, it it just tastes like a double IPA. It's not unique. That's my problem. You know, maybe this was like pre-prohibition or what? Where did it go? But like, it was actually during prohibition, and nobody really knew what they were doing because it was so hey. illegal. Did you know how like banana runs don't taste like banana, but it's because they taste like whatever banana they had in the seventies, but that banana died out or whatever. It's the, the banana whole... flavoring, yeah, right, the like juicy fruit flavoring kind of. Yeah, so it's like the when you think of artificial banana, like there was a point in time where someone was like, "This is what real bananas taste like," but then those bananas don't exist anymore. I think gross vomit <laughs> beer, like like we were talking about the prohibition, like you know it was in the back of someone's truck and it had been sitting there for like three months because they were trying to get it across some kind of state border. And someone had it, and they were like, "Oh, this is authentic Prohibition beer." And why they kept that flavor around? It's like um, it's like lutefisk or anything, like any of that gross fermented food people eat just because you know three hundred years ago that's how we had to eat food. It's a bad beer. So, do you guys want to rank these by first to last, like one, number one, number two, number three? I I'm down just to rank the brewery. <laughs> uh, we haven't yeah. had their entire repertoire. I well, I told them that they didn't. They had to. Fu- they couldn't fuck up with the ones they sent us. They didn't send us those. They were purchased by a friend and left at the Super Bowl. They showed up at my house, Dan. How do you extra- describe that? You know, I was here and beer showed up and it dead pelican on it and it's not great. Like baby Jesus, it just appeared. I think we should let the guest decide yeah. how we're going to rate let's, this. Let's, let's listen I, to the guest I, I'm ranking. I'm a good fan of classic, just like lowest to highest. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Like, go, with, yeah, go for it. For like the buildup. Uh, definitely the, the pre-prohibition was the worst one. Yeah, I yes. think we can all agree on that. So I guess what really what it comes down to is where you land on the red ale because I think we all I Dan and I think have a similar feeling about that. It's a solid number two. Mm-hmm. So you're gonna put the double IPA at first, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That's but but and this is the question, like Deschutes or you know uh, Ninkowski, like like would you ever buy one of these versus another beer you've had? Even mm. not not even like an A, but like in that. It depends on what, like, if I went to a bar mm. and, like, the double IPA was on tap and, like, I mean, it just depends what yeah, else is okay, on. that's, for, no, for a double IPA, no, you know what, I've been kind of mean. <clears throat> the double IPA is pretty good, and for 9% alcohol, if you're going to get that on tap, I'm going to say it, I'm going to give Pelican Brewery, like, a C-, minus, maybe a D plus. I just don't think they're good at making beer. Mm. It is kind of hard, I would say, like, to give them a solid score just on the limited amount that we did taste. But it was a lot of varieties. That's true. Yeah. And also We did kind of go from like light to dark. We did. That's that's what we did. Daniel, Yo. what's your final thoughts on the beer and we'll move into our segments. My final thoughts I have to agree with what seems to be the uh the rating for everyone here, which Proof is opinion. Uh bottom is the prohibition cream ale, mm-hmm. middle is the red ale and top is the double IPA. And you should know I'm not a double IP guy. He's not a double I'm IPA not, guy. But I would say I actually prefer this double IPA or just IPA mm. in general over other ones I've had over Ninkasi over okay um, no, that's well, good to Ninkasi know Ninkasi is very overrated mm-hmm. yeah I agree with that did, did they get bought by Anheuser Busch or was that uh they have like Anheuser Busch has like a fifty one percent majority or forty nine per- or I they have like almost half yeah. but I can't remember if it's the bigger half or the smaller half not not that it factors I mean like they they made it they made the big time mm-hmm. which is congrats for Eugene congrats for Ninkasi um but I agree that they're a little bit overrated. They have really good design. Yeah. They have really good branding. That's what it is. Well, you know, I think what it comes with, especially with, you know, being so in town like they are, I think that's just this Ninkoski attitude. People just, like, I the beer's fine. You know, it's kind of, it's the same price as any other beer that's fine in that category. I, I often don't buy it in the store because the guy who was, talking, uh, who was uh, sampling for it was a jerk one time, and he represented the company, and so that means the company's a jerk. But... <laughs> What, 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 you're going to be paid to reckon, represent a company? You're going to do it bad? I'm not going to support the company. Um, but, like, I just feel like people get so excited about it. They get so hopped up. Oh. Excuse me. Excuse me wow. for that. About Ninkoski. And it's, it's not better than the other, you know, the other beers in that price range. It's not better than Lagunitas or Deschutes, you know. Well, I think a lot of it was that they were the first, like, big microbrewery in town, you know, mm-hmm. 10, 11, 12 years ago. And so everybody was like, oh, look, check out this cool new brewery. They make mm-hmm. these really good beers. But then <laughs> but then Oakshire and Hot Valley and, mm-hmm. you know, et cetera, they started popping up and getting, you know, good and popular yeah. as well. 
and they blew them like Nikazi way out of the water. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the thing too is um, you're, you're mentioning all these breweries, and it's just reminding me that KLCC Brewfest is coming up. KLC Brewfest. Now I gotta. We had so much fun at KLC Brewfest last week. Which is when you'll be hearing to this episode. So oh, yes. We're going to try not to talk about too many future events. That is but... apropos, though, because you're going to have a good time. I'm going to have a good time. Yeah. No, I know. I know I am. I'm not. Uh, I'm going to drink only good beers while I'm there. I'm going to plan ahead of time. No lagers. Try. I got, I got a couple of recommendations for you. Okay, give it to me. And this this will mean nothing to the viewers who yes. the LCC Brew Festival hey, well, passed. Hey, guess what? If you're listening to this, I you've only got 51 weeks till KLC Brewfest next year. <laughs> Sign up. Get your tickets early. Okay. I, I would recommend if you're going to cider, Reverend Nat's going to be there. Oh, hell yeah. He you might know, have. He's my man. He might have some um, some flavors that aren't on the shelves here I'll get in the Eugene. plain one. I mean, that's like half the cost of the ticket, one of his ciders. His ciders are not cheap. They're they're not, but they're good. And well, also, of course they are. I don't know if Finn River is going to be there, but if Finn River is, their black currant sparkling is amazing. Oh, yeah. I know you wanted to get that on the yeah, show. It's really good. Well, I think that's uh, the end of this alcohol portion and probably yeah. going to be the soberest episode we ever record because I'm not drinking any more of that trash. Well, what about the double IPA? Well, you, it's in your hand. Here, I'll give it yeah. to you. Can I have it back? Thank I'll, you. I'll drink the red ale. I can do the, the red ale. Sharing oh. is caring. Sharing yeah. is caring. Eventually, we're, all that's going to be left is that cream ale that we hate. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus. So be it. What so be is it. our... We've got uh, 15 or so minutes left in this half. Do you want to go into trivia or do you want to do... Let's do trivia. Okay. And I am going to, I'll put a piece of music right here because I've got a whole bunch of music. This is going to be a song by the Eugenias called White Wolf, White Fox, White Wolf. Ah, shit. Edit in whichever one's right. Probably White Fox. Here we go. We're back uh, from was that, that. Was that White Fox? That was White Fox. Yeah. Did I, oh, did I say? I think I said White. If you listen to the edit, you probably only hear me saying White Fox and definitely not saying White Wolf. Okay. Um, Except for well, just then. Yeah. Well, if you listen to the edit, it might not be there. 
Uh, yeah, so that was local band Eugenius. They came on a part of the art last week. Incredibly talented. And you know what's crazy about those guys? They've played one show. And they've been around for like a month and a half. They got together at LCC. They were both students. Um, Liz had already written some songs, and Liv is the violin player. So it's I don't obviously they're talented. I'm not saying they they just wrote that song in the last week, but um, for having such a short history as a band, holy crap, do they sound good? Mm-hmm. Lars, I gotta say, up, say it. The, your your other podcast show way better. Yeah, it's really embarrassing. I was gonna say way better. I was gonna say it's a good. I was gonna pay pay you a compliment. Thank you. <laughs> it's a good show. It's fun. You yeah. know, we're still figuring out where we are as hosts. I will tell you guys right now. The episode we recorded yesterday, which will air a full week before this on Sunday. Holy shit, was that good. This guy comes on. His name is Andrew. And he's like, hey, you know, I've got some songs I've written. But also, if you give me a subject, I'll improvise a song about it. And you know when people say that. And I feel bad now. But you know when people say that. It's not going to be good. And so he did that. We gave him some suggestions. And he improvised like seven fucking incredible songs. I mean, too good. It was like beyond empathy. He was. It's like he was us. It was. It was weird and really it, sen- it was sensual it was good seeing the <laughs> i saw the instagram clip it looks great yeah and, uh, it's gonna really, sound so good in post-production what i really like about that podcast a part of the art is i'm not even in like to music and stuff mm-hmm. well I'm, no, okay <laughs> <laughs> I, listen, I, I listen to music but like a podcast all based on music mm-hmm. i really i listen to the excerpt excerpts mm-hmm. of um songs are recording with these artists and it's great because there's a lot of local artists don't have an outlet to mm-hmm. record their sounds and get it out there and the practic it's an awesome opportunity. Yeah, and that was the big thing with the Eugenias was that they, you know, because they haven't been around that long, they haven't gone into a studio yet. So they have all these friends and family members, some of them out of state, who are like, oh, we want to hear you. Well, yeah. now we have the outlet. And it's it's cool. You know, it's it's a nice, like, trade-off where it's like, you come on the show, you get four or five, you know, high-quality recordings, and we get an hour and a half of entertainment for the audience. And it's all promotion for you anyways. So I like a part of the art. It's a good show. It's super fun. We're going, uh, we're going strong on that. But we're here... Um, what if Eugene? Now I'm told we've never played this game before. No, it's it's a new game, and it's probably going to be the one and only time we play it. Oh wait, Eric? <laughs> I did. I t- I, I forgot. So I I said we were back from the break. I don't know if I mentioned that I have my wine, but I do have my wine now. For those keeping track of drinks at home, what kind of wine it's is it? Sorry, thanks uh, for asking, Derek. Well, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm glad someone cares. No one's ever asked. I love wine. So. It's a uh, Cypress Merlot. Mm. It is trash mm. and seven dollars a bottle. That's now, my kind of fa- my fa- my favorite kind of wine. <laughs> the wine guy at my work will tell you that this is like an overflow wine. So there's a vendor who sells their wine for twenty dollars a bottle, and they make so much that they can't sell it all. So they just relabel it. It's a lot like the Epiphone of the Gibson world, right? Like it's it's supposed to be that twenty dollar wine. They just didn't have enough to sell under that label. It does not taste like a twenty dollar bottle of wine. It tastes about like a four dollar bottle of wine. Mm. So. For but, seven dollars. Yeah, it's well. So when you said the economy is really fucking me, you mentioned that you spent thousands of dollars on, on alcohol, beer. On, yeah. oh, on beer. Okay. Yeah. Well, I said I spent about a thousand dollars over the year. Yeah, like forty dollars a week just for the two different shows. Well, cheers to you and cheers to Derek mm-hmm. for coming on to play cheers a round, to you. a round of our Eugene trivia prize bucket challenge. You just Sick. said it was a new show. That's the show we've already done. I have an intro for that. No, no, fuck no, no. You. technically, technically, this falls into the veil of Eugene trivia. So I'm, I'm keeping that. Don't edit that out. <laughs> so is it a new show or not? It's a new set. It's a, yeah. it's a one-time segment. Let me give me the, um, give me the phrase you always give me. Let's play that music. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Derek. <laughs> Derek, you can't hear it, but there's music for the people listening at home. Oh, oh, okay. I thought you were gonna hit a button. <laughs> no, I, no, I told you. We're, okay, Here's, we switched to the look. Ableton's great, but it sounds bad. So we switched back to Cubase. But I can't cue the music. Ooh, I'm liking that theme. Are Are you digging this? Uh, calling this, so, calling people out. I call people out. This background noise. Are you enjoying this? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah it's yeah. good. Yeah, it's great. It's a really good one. I don't know if I went with the Cassidy one or the other one. I'll find out. We'll find out. Okay, so this new game is called. Uh, whose slogan is it anyway? <laughs> All right, welcome. <laughs> I had to read it off my phone. <laughs> welcome back to another episode of uh, Whose slogan is it anyway? That's the show. Um, so in this in this new game I created, the one and only time we're gonna play it. And we have uh, different prizes. So how did you want to? Oh, you know what? Uh, we don't actually have. We can't find the prize purse. Uh, who is it? Do you want to do three? Get some a prize? Would you want to give him a prize anyway? Sure. Just one prize. First off, here's the irony. <laughs> Explain how, because I only have five prizes, but they're big prizes. I don't want to give them all away. The irony is, this is the first time 
of the Eugene Trivia Prize Bucket Challenge. Has had Actually a has prize bucket. It's not over there. He's pointing over it? there. Where is it? I hit it so the guests can't see what the prizes oh are, you God. asshole. This is the first time that we have an actual metal bucket with prizes in it. Oh, sweet. Even though the show is always called that, it never had a bucket before. No, I we, feel did, so we did have a bucket before. Oh, that was with all the utensils in it, and that was so cool, and you got rid of it. Okay. Learn your What If Damn Eugene it, history, Daniel. Daniel. So in this game, I'm going to list some slogans for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Either the slogan um, as as it stands, or a slogan and omit the name of the business. And I'm going to see, Derek, if you can name uh, what business has the slogan. Okay. And these are all Eugene. Yeah. Yeah. He's Been ready. here for 26 years, I think. We got, is it five questions? Five, yes. We got five questions. I'm looking for three out of five, but you get a lifeline. And I'll also give you a prize if you get two out of five. <laughs> You're very strict. But there's... <laughs> all right, Derek. Slogan one. Are you ready? Yeah. Eggs are cheaper in the country. Uh, so are RVs and something, a guarantee. You got it, guarantee. There it is. Eggs are cheaper, eggs are cheaper in the country, and so are RVs and motorhomes? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's what I is was. It, no, I want to say tractors. But. I always, with that one, whenever I hear the, the commercial, because it says guarantee, but it sounds like he's saying guarantee. It does. Mm-hmm. Like like a Boston accent. Also, I mean, can I up, did, He lost his arm? He did. What, what happened? You didn't know what? that? No, no, I don't watch TV. I haven't no. seen a commercial okay, in like 100 so years, Dan. The reason I, I, I actually asked Derek before we record this episode, I said, hey, Derek, did you grow up with, with cable, with like local cable? Mm-hmm. And he said yes. And I'm like, okay, this guy's going to know all of the terrible local, terrible but lovely local commercials, oh. including Guarantee, which has the guy go, motorhomes, 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 and then the, the 3D egg character yep. who like walks <laughs> over and then points on the map. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love that as a kid. Um, you but, liked that. That that was your high quality entertainment. You're like, oh, I can't wait for the commercial to come no, back. I watched Saturday morning cartoons and local commercials would play, yeah. and I'd see that every time. Uh, so did I, but I didn't love it. It's funny you mentioned the guy only has one arm because I didn't know that till about five years ago. It's been that long. I just this, noticed it this year. Yeah, there's no way. <laughs> No, <laughs> last time I knew he had. I, knew, I didn't even notice. Someone told me. My sister told me, and I'm like, no way. And I watched the commercials, and if you notice, he's angled, so you can only see I, the front arm. Daniel, I haven't seen one of his commercials. I just in noticed so that long. his like shirt sleeve is folded. Up. No, no. Yeah. Wow. I don't know what happened. Hmm. Well, let's move on to question yeah. number two. He, he nailed that one. Uh, slogan number two, actually, Lars. Okay, well, don't don't do that shit. <laughs> slogan <laughs> don't number get two. Get on here and pull that rank on me. When you've got the hungries, call the. Pizza pipeline. Hotline. No one delivers more taste to your door. He got it. Well, it helped that you sang it for him. Well, should I read it flat? When you got the hungriest call, but I don't know. It, I would say in the future, it read it flat. Yeah, because the harmony definitely does. It, do, it gives it away, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, he's one prize in. So but you know what? I've never. I knew Pizza Pipeline Hotline. I would if you said Hotline, I might have got it. But I never actually heard the whole slogan because I've never seen the commercial. I've only you know been in. Pipeline. I feel like the part where it says no one delivers more taste to your door might have given it away. <laughs> no, because there's like a thousand pizza places. Like if Pizza Pipeline Hotline would get there. Yeah, but the fact is these are Eugene only. Uh, so? Like Pegasus Pizza Pipeline yeah. is in multiple states. Yeah. It's oh, a it, 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 it comes out of Spokane, actually. Yeah. Get wrecked, you piece of there's shit. There's one in Corvallis, oh I'm pretty sure. This guy, Why would a place that doesn't have a chain have Pizza Pipeline bugs? Listen, I grew up in Vanita for 18 years. <laughs> Oh, that sounds, Daniel, like a you problem, because this show's not called What Up Vanita. <laughs> I feel like that'd be a very boring well, show. Maybe it well, should. Well, if I get a coworker named Anita. Oh. Oh, Derek. I didn't tell the audience. Okay. Derek, I said Derek, what Derek. up Christine to a coworker. You are on Logan 3. <laughs> okay? Logan 3. Logan 3, and I'm going to read it flat from here, because that's what you guys told yep. me to do. Yeah. Your slogan is Pack a Bowl. Huh. Is that? Mm, I'm Can I take get a little victory drink there? Don't don't don't, don't, don't lifeline wanna... on this one. I don't. No, I don't want to. Uh, okay. I was gonna ask. Can I get a hint? But... Yeah, let's go for a hint. It's not what you think it is. Okay. Clearly. So here's my thought. The first thought obviously sounds like some kind of pot distributor, yep. but that would make it a relatively recent business. Yep. But I'm thinking my first thought, and I, I don't know the slogan, so I honestly couldn't tell you. First thought is John's Mongolian Grill. This is you know mm. you throw the ball all the way up, mm-hmm. but it maybe like another business of the same style. If it's not I was thinking slogan. food and then also Asian food. Mm-hmm. So that is I, the thing I said was Asian food. I'll take points for that. I'll take half a point if it is Asian food. Yeah, I, I will give you half a point if it's Asian food. <laughs> Sweet. So what's the, what's the final answer? Uh, you guys are just saying Asian food. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Asian food. We're calling Asian food for half a point. <laughs> there you go.
<laughs> yeah, half a point. You got it. What, what is it? it? Uh, is Jung's Mongolian? <laughs> 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 Could have had a whole point. Got a sweet half point. Well, hey man, is this a new thing? People can just partial listen. credit. An That's entire... how I survived college. <laughs> oh, did you go to LCC, U of O? Where'd you go? Both. Damn boy. Yep. You gone to every partial college. credit, partial attendance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Partial degree. <laughs> well, no, I got a full. You're partially done with this, and so far you have two prizes or one prize. We have well, can I get one and a half? half? Yes. I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just Bas- break it in half. Basically, we've only got five prizes. You get one of them, but they're like way better prizes than they were in the past. That's true. Wait. I'll let you. Oh, you know what? If, you, off mic, if you're if you go all the way, I'll let you do them all again. You can pick your prize. This is, it was going to be random. If you oh. get if you get perfect oh, oh, if you get a perfect oh. score, you can just I, pick the prize. I, I really think you should be able to pick because some of the sizes might not fit. Well, I I listed like medium slash large on that one. Okay, we'll figure it out. All right. Um, What's your s- condom size? Slogan. <laughs> <laughs> slogan four. <laughs> slogan four. It's a. Uh, uh, this was this is an easy one. This is Go a. For it. This is a. Uh, I'm lobbing this ball toward you. The only appliance. Mr. Appliance. Oh uh, no! There's a, there's a local commercial <laughs> I know. That guy's nuts. Also, Mr. Plants, uh no longer exists. No, it's oh, still there. I heard it no longer exists. No, it's still there, and I was actually there to drop off a refrigerator with my coworker like two months ago. Do you go on the Eugene subreddit? Yeah, sometimes. Okay. I was gonna say someone on there is misleading them because I got Are they Mr. Appliance leading them? I'm sorry. Well it's I Appliance Empire now. Of it says Mr. Appliance on the I drive past it every day. Well he he got sued. From who? Oh, he got sued what? from a Texas company called Mr. Appliance, and because Okay, Mr. Appliance hit the big time when Taco Bell started reaching out to local uh-huh. advertisers. Uh-huh. And after that, he I hear he got a, a bit of an ego, dyed his hair, started getting um, some work done. Oh, sure, good for him. Um, <laughs> good for him. I'm I met so proud him. of him. I, I met him. He's, he's look, nice. Ha- no, he's, hey, he finally had the strength to stop being ugly. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Money makes ugly people not ugly anymore. Yeah. All right, well, well Derek... Fact. Derek, technically, even though you just said Asian for junks, <laughs> slightly <laughs> racist. Um, what? You might, you might be getting. It's never really. Um, it's food that comes in a bowl, Dan. Which country, would you, continent, would you think it's from? You might be the first guest ever in the history of the show to get five out of five. Mm. I'm, I'm fairly confident that's happened at least once or twice. No. That sounds okay. Do you keep track <laughs> of it? No. I no. I someone in the early episodes did, but we weren't giving away multiple prizes back then. That's probably what it was. Yeah. All right, final question, Derek. What business has the slogan, Eugene's number one podcast? This one. What's the name of that podcast? What's up, Eugene? I'm giving it to him. No, I'm giving you it to got him. it wrong. No, I'm you giving got, it to him. That's it. it. I can't. I can't. It's such a confusing name. What? It's, it's what up. Oh, <laughs> my bad. Yeah. Slang. And there's a comma and a question mark. Which is really confusing if you ever want to ask someone a question like, hey, can I use your music on my show, What If Eugene? Because I kind of need two question marks for that. Yeah, you got to put in the quotes in the question mark. <laughs> Derek, we're going to give it to you. Mm-hmm. Well, no, you, you asked you asked for, for, a half. for half. So you got four and a half points, which I'm doesn't gonna, qualify. Hey man, I'm going to get the bucket out. I'm 90%. Gonna, here's what I'm going to do. Here's, what I'm gonna, here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to let you pick a number out of my microphone bag that has some numbers written down on paper in it. And then I'm going to show you that prize. And then if you hate that prize... You can take any of the prizes. What but if I hit them all? Then, I don't know. Maybe <laughs> go on a different show. Maybe go on Eugene's second best podcast. What's that one Dan Carlin does? Dan Carlin's Hardcore History. Hardcore History. Why don't you go on that show? It's, it's actually one of the number one of the top podcasts in the U.S. about oh, history. Yeah, but is it one Seriously? of the top ones? It is really, yeah. Brad. In Eugene. No, ours There's, is number yeah, one in Eugene, according saying. to our blog. And hey, uh, if anything, a part of the art is getting more plays than this, so they're up there too. Good job, our part of the art. Yeah, thanks. It's mostly Thomas. He does all the work. Musicians. All right, That's all I, I got to say about that. Yeah. I, the first one I grabbed was uh, number two. Number two. Numero okay. dos. Okay. Uh, Dan, do you want to entertain the audience while I grab prize number two from the bag? Um, Derek and I are family friends. Long, it's true. T- long time family friends. Yep. Our, our parents go way back. They go way back. Way, Derek, way back. you have one, and I've got two of them, but it's because they're different sizes. Okay. A sweet Transformers t-shirt. Sick. I don't know which size you are. I don't know what size I am, am either. Why are you throwing them right on the mic? I'm throwing them at the guest. That's where the guest is, at the mic. 
I, you, I don't you, think I'm an extra large. Are they both XL? No, one one like, small, but the small one looks like it actually would fit. Yeah, me. it looks like a large that or medium. That looks pretty shrinkable, yeah, yeah. though. Yeah. Do you want to pick another one? We have other prizes. This, do you, are you good with the Transformer t-shirt, or are you going to roll those dice? Roll let, me, let me roll those dice. dice. Okay, well, I'll just give you the bucket. Or right, do you want to oh, you want to pull another one out? Yeah, pull another number I'll, out. I'll pull another number out. Okay. Pull another number. Uh, four. Four. Uh, for the for the audience, you should know that the prizes in this prize bucket have been donated by Cassidy Zuniga, a previous mm-hmm. guest, as well as Columbia Distributing in Springfield. They're Seriously? the people Seriously. who got me in to nice. the KLCC brew fest. It, sh- it should be noted that they did not donate prizes to this show. No, but it rather was, it was an, a reward for a social media thing. Yes, but I ent- I entered um, us into a contest for Columbia Distributing. Mm-hmm. And we won a prize bucket, including KLCC Brewfest tickets and a bunch of swag. And what oh, you got, gonna, they're smaller than the shirt, so I'm going to give you both of them. Beer cozies, Soup. Hop Valley. Ooh, Hop Valley. Oh, please don't put them Fun on the fact, trash beer we have. Uh, me and my roommates have a beer koozie collection at our house, so this is I'm actually going to take these and put them in the collection. Hell yeah, brother. Now, I I never, I've never said that. Why did I say that? That was cool. <laughs> no, that was cool. Uh, it's I'm cool, gonna, brother. I'm going to show you this other prize, but you can't tell the audience what it is because they don't mm, know okay but you can just react with either upsetness or or you know like relief that you didn't get it depending on how you feel as long as it's like you do it on mic so we can really hear here's the prize you could have won damn oh i know right shit maybe next time gotta come back that's pretty rad thank you thank you i would put i don't know what i'd put in there he was legitimately the said that he didn't yeah, get that. That's a good prize. That's why I that's... didn't want you to leave it out so he could just see it and be like, Unf- oh, I want that one. It's just unfortunate that it's like the reboot. And... Yeah. Ooh, I like is. that little hint. No, it is. Uh, it definitely. That. If it was OG, yeah. I mean, that would have been wild. That would have been ga- that We're been going the to the Also, break. probably really expensive. Yes, definitely. <laughs> Loner on the corner. Just trying to get a With someone else's light How they try to stay there Only rain bottles know Their reflection stares back blankly Oh, and where are they to go? Billowing smoke and gold the vision, the bag of leaf tears, and sweat of poison. Oh, and baby, carry your own weight and drink at your own rate. Billowing smoke 
Claritin's pretty much our default Instagram filter, which I'm fine with. It kind of sets a, a tone. Is, that Clar- is Claritin the one you it's use? like the first one after, just normal. Oh, it's yeah, Claritin. yeah. Which I one will, is that? Claritin's good. It's just like the first one. It's kind of a cool color. It's the it. one I posted that video on. The, it's just the first one. It's is so there easy. an account for this podcast? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, yeah. At, we're at Lars in the studio. Oh, yeah. You follow my every time I flush account. Don't yeah, you? dude. That's yeah. The, one of the best Instagram <laughs> accounts I've followed. <laughs> Thank you. I, I would take that over like cosplay girls. Dude. <laughs> Any <laughs> day. Yeah. Yeah. It's at Lars in the studio. Yeah. At Lars in the studio. Well, we're just doing a little bit of social media when we come back to this episode that was Drink at Your Own Rate by the Eugenias. What an excellent, oh my God, what an excellent voice. And now we are going into, what are, what are we doing now? Is this, are we doing the news? Is this the news? Is it inappropriate to say that to other people have segments called the news? It's Eugene News, Eugene News, come on down, get your summer blues. I wish we were just calling it the news. Can I go back to... I'll get sued, that's fine. What? Oh, you call it the news Don't on Grand Tour sued. and Top Gear? It's the Eugene News. <laughs> <laughs> Who's getting sued in town, Dan? Oh, now they're not... Get, we're not... Or you're not getting sued because you said we're not getting sued. That's, that's right. how it works. That's yeah. how it works. You say we're not getting sued for this. Let's bring in all that non-copyright... Or that copyright music. <clears throat> yeah, shall we? No, oh, because we said we're not getting sued. It's right there. I can replay it if you'd like. All right. This is um, Ed Sheeran's Shape of You. <laughs> brought to you by Kato. You know what? I've actually got another song by the Eugenias. So I was just going to throw that in. But I mean, you do you if you want. Hey, you know what? I'm not a person that normally um, shit talks. You know, like you, you hate oh. uh, that one business. We won't name him. Oh, yeah. Which one? Uh, the, barn the Barn Light. He hates the Barn Light. <laughs> it's can there... I, can I... They're, They're kind of trash. They're, pretentious. They're kind of trash. Every time the guest always agrees with me. I like I I go there sometimes with oh, my friend, but no, it's cool. You can be trashy, whatever. May, may I shit on a uh, business? It's not my Eugene? first. Choice. I have made it, dude. My... Shit on a Eugene business. Yeah, I've made it my thing to just call shit out. We did the last episode of a part of the art we recorded, which is episode six. We called out like seventeen things. Oh we just God. all we do we call people out. Um, there's a rapper who Thomas doesn't like anymore. <clears throat> I forgot who he is, but we you know get called out that guy. So. I'm gonna say fuck you, K Duck. <laughs> yeah oh fight the man fight the man also they they don't care they, they don't, don't care enough they, they, they well, hey man listen. when you have that much money well, who, hey you know? now hold they on really don't. they don't no. really no because i've contacted well, them it, like it's just it's all automated now right like there's no dj yeah. it's just it's just like a computer program well they, they have the hosts are good the hosts on kdeck are good but they're mm. just they don't want to spend any they don't want to spend money in the places where they should Mm-hmm. Because they have an old style of thinking when, when it comes to the radio. Well, and that's why you have KLCC's Brewfest, which was lit, I assume. KLCC <laughs> Brewfest. God, that was a good time when <laughs> that <laughs> happened. <laughs> it was. Remember, that week was so sunny, and it's been snowy for two months since then. I know, right? It's like as it's, soon as I, I, lost, power, 20, I <laughs> lost power, and I couldn't produce this episode 
for seven weeks because of all the snow. It's like as soon as late February hit, the snowfall. What do we have, like six, seven inches now? I mean, that's why I have seven inches every day, Dan. <laughs> you wish. Well, you know what we have? UG News. <clears throat> Bring it. Bring it. Uh, Derek, you went to South Eugene. I did. You did. Did you hear that? They, uh, some of the students there this current year are mm-hmm. trying to change the name of South Eugene Axemen. They are proposing a change of name. How do you feel I, about that? Uh, you on the spot. Because they want to make it general or gender neutral or they want it inclusive. That's yes. Either or. Um, like I think it's not uh, racist. That's my thing. It's not a racist one. No. So, because it's axe men yeah mm. no i know and like i don't know like honestly i don't give a shit because i don't mm. go there anymore yeah. but i understand like that's the way like our like especially young people's culture don't mind i think someone's doing like a trash oh, it's can trash rally. yeah yeah because the window real shit move um yeah. no i think i don't know it's it's important to be inclusive to everybody because we're all we're all pieces of trash really <laughs> Yeah, when it well, comes it gets, down to speaking it. of trash, <laughs> yeah. there's a garbage can. We're just, we're just, and we should just, all fit in the same trash bin. We should all fit. That's beautiful. <laughs> we'll skip. So, how do you feel about that? <laughs> uh, we should all fit in the same trash bin. We should That's, all fit in the same actually, trash actually. We should bin. all fit in the same recycle bin. Here's my thing. Okay, the the reason That's I bring re- this up. We, do we know what they want to change it to? Because if they change it to like the feather women, like if they make it more racist, you know, like I, that's not good. No, they. I think they just want to change it to be, yeah, like. Well, axe people wouldn't fit on a shirt. No, axe, no. I have an idea. Axe do no dudes. No, is, I guess axe. I have an idea. Okay, firemen, but firefighters. Yeah, so it's firefighters. Axe fighters instead of axe men, axe fighters. But that's or as axe long throwers. As axe, are they axe wielders. Axes? What about like the axes or I something? Like that one. Or the axes is the axes? that's not bad. That that fits on a shirt, right? Yeah. Like axe men, a x e, you know, m e n, like it's. You know, just and it's and easier three. to like chant across a gym. But, then, you, but then you're just Axes. Axes. then you're just yeah. an object. Yeah, but there's nothing you're wrong allowed with to that. objectify uh, yourself. How about how about the axe chuckers? Is that per- <laughs> <laughs> they're doing another trash can? They really have no respect for this show. The people in this alley, they don't know. Um, <laughs> you should invite your neighbors onto the show. Oh, that's, we have, we yeah, have. That's oh. how we got Dan on the show. It's mm. a big mistake in my life. Yep. yep. Terrible. Um, I regret, but I, mean, I, I think I'm I'm for it, but also I don't give a shit. That's exactly how I feel. That's how I'm yeah. Like, do what you guys want. Seems like a little bit of a waste of time. Yeah, but there. But well, and, and that's actually another thing I've talked about with people is like, is that really what the school district should be spending money on renaming us like like all the new logos, et cetera, et cetera? Like when they could put money into arts. Yeah, science, you know, possible. But I mean, but it's I, also I one of those things that. where they could have students design it in their art programs, right? You know, what I mean, like that's a the like it, it leads that, to instead of, of spending those. the money on the mm-hmm. rebranding, right? Then all they have the to students do is, rebrand themselves, put that money into that's a good yeah, point. and then, then 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 all they have to do is make the merch, I, you which know, is going to make them more the money. The principal of South Eugene High School was my seventh grade science teacher, oh, so him. maybe I should no just go way. to him and just be like, "Hey, Andy, die!" Like, "Hey, Andy." Who I'm sure no students ever called Andy Dick. Nope. Andy, you His principals up? aren't dicks. He was a dope teacher. He was nice. one of the better ones. Andy Dope. What? What? What is our next news story? <laughs> I was going to say, that school's not... Daniel I was going to try to segue it. It's okay, though. As you know, okay, the Wayward Lambs, they're closed. Yep. Yeah. They are officially gone. I did not go <clears> in <throat> to celebrate uh, their closing. or their. their... I like their bar. It was a good bar. It was fine. It was good. Um, I, it was really... Like, the interior decorating was beautiful. Mm-hmm. It was, I mean, I really I like didn't the, have any complaints. Yeah, the windows that opened up during mm-hmm. the summer, that was awesome. It was located near the other bars in town I like, which is one of the things that pisses me off about the barn light. If my shitty friends want to go there, I have to not only deal with that, but also then it's like a full block walk to the Jameson. Like, just go to the Jameson first. It's a better bar. It is a better bar. Exactly. It's my favorite bar. They have cushions like Jameson, on yeah. the bar. Um, also, my friends work there, so I'm a little biased. I mean, I, you should be biased. I, they're friendly people. I'd be yep. friends with them. I was going to say about Wayward. Uh, oh, Ariel and uh, Ariel had some friends from California oh, visiting. Ariel sent me a friend request on Facebook. She did? Yeah. Good for her. I know. It was so <laughs> exciting. <laughs> she won't hear this. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, and we, we added a couple places. Like, we we ate out a bunch because mm-hmm. we had friends visiting out of town. We were showing sure. some good places. Um, I went to Mom, Hot Mama's Wings or Mama's oh, Hot Wings. Yeah, Hot, Hot Mama's, Mama's Wings. I love their dirty fries. Do you know what I went to? And I already forgot the name. I went to that bakery... Uh, noisette, right, noisette. No, the one that's like right, right there. Uh, it's uh, 
Like if I also oh, read on stuff. Soraya? No, the, the Oh, Metropole. Yeah, I went to Metropole. Oh. Cuz would there's two there's oh, two places know. there. Yeah. yeah, sorry, I don't whichever. Do you go to Great Harvest or Metropole? Oh, I went to Great Harvest. That's what that was the one. The one that's always like the one that smells like fresh bread. Oh, dude, their bread is so Cuz cuz I I was going to go to Metropole and cuz I wanted to get a sandwich and I want to mix it up. And it was like a twelve dollar sandwich, and they were right next to Jimmy John's, which is a seven dollar sandwich. And I was like, "That's kind of fucked up." But then I went to Great Harvest, and it was like a six dollar sandwich, and it was fucking awesome. They do a drink and a cookie for two twenty five, but it's like a huge cookie. It was like nine. It was nine dollars dead. This combo was crazy. It was so good. The bread was good. They're everything. You cannot stop talking about Great Harvest. So what are you gonna say? What kind of sandwich did you get? I went with um. It was one of the like the Thanksgiving sandwiches. So it was Ooh, turkey, nice. cranberry, cream cheese, and you know what they had? Um, they do uh, lettuce, tomato, onion, and all of them. And I did ask for no onion. She put them on, but it was like a little bit of red onion, so it was actually it worked out fine. It wasn't it wasn't yeah, too yeah. much, and it was red onion, so it was fine. Um, but I had tomato. It was, I normally don't get tomato on those, but it came with it, and it was actually the tomato complemented it very well. Mm. I had the honey whole wheat bread, which was mm. incredible. Um, and it came with a, and you know what? Because I I've never had one of those kind of turkey style sandwiches with a pickle before, but it came with a pickle, and that salty flavor complemented it so well because it's such a sweet flavor, and the baby carrots were good. No complaints, honestly. The only complaint I had is that when she ran my card, uh, she didn't have me sign anything. I didn't get a chance to put a tip on it, and I because I would have tipped her. So I, you bring cash, bring cash to yeah. Great Harvest. Great Harvest is amazing. Like mm-hmm. if you buy a loaf of their bread, it's the best bread I've had in Eugene. Oh, it's incredible. I mean, that's what fresh bread should be. As far as like sliced bread goes, Metropole has good um, non-sliced like whole loaves. Oh, so the best invention before sliced bread of like Pugli. I forget <laughs> what it's called. They have non-sliced bread too at Great Harvest. Um, underrated sandwich topping actually is mashed potatoes oh, or wait. sandwich filling. I what? guess where? Yeah, where especially at? for like. Well, I don't know. I do it for myself when I make oh. leftover Thanksgiving Day. Oh, for sure. Sandwiches. For sure. Yeah, that's good mashed to know. Potatoes. Are you now? Are you putting some gravy on that bad boy? Um. Yeah, like mayonnaise. You just like because it's always thick. Yeah, after yeah. It's no, in the yeah. Fridge oh, right? no, I feel you. Yeah, off the try. I'm that. all about the gravy on yeah. a sandwich. Mm-hmm. I'll have to try that. Well, the whole the whole reason I brought up um, Wayward Lamb is because a lot of businesses in Eugene have closed or are closing. You might not be aware of it. Is this a trivia round too? Nope. Oh, um, you guys know Membrio? Uh, I yeah, the Latin kitchen. I remember oh, because it was yeah, an answer yeah, across across from Beerstein. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's right next to yeah, right near Beerstein. Um, apparently they're closed. Well, that's like the seventeenth thing in that location yep. to close. So. Don't buy it. It's oh, it, haunted. It's haunted. Is that one it's of those buildings one of those that always places, Yeah, it's yeah. always changing. It used to be that, like a, that was there for a while. That was probably was. the longest running. But there was, I remember because it always, it was called like herbs or something. But when you walked by, it always smelled so good. And it was like a stoner sandwich shop on the same. No, that's a different place. No, no, no. There, there is the stoner sandwich shop. But this one, it was, it was like a oh. cover shop because it was like $14 for a sandwich. Holy but you shit. got, you got uh, like an ounce or something. Not an ounce, uh, a gram. <laughs> like there was a special menu slang. Yeah, yeah. Lars, we gotta, we gotta hash this out. I went to a sandwich place that was amazing, like over five years ago mm-hmm. in Eugene, and then they disappeared. And I don't know what happened to them. That's the location. Yeah, I've heard the sandwiches were really good. They were, um, they were just no. really expensive. No, but there is. I know what you're talking about. It's over by the Dutch Bros. No, yeah. no, you're no, no, no. Chiba not, Hut. not Chiba Hut. Not Chiba no, Hut. Herbs no, no. was next to. It was on Willamette, right? That was before it. 13th. That got torn down to put Wait, up the that park. That was the Cafe Membrio. Oh shit! It no. was Herbs. That was the place. Yeah. That was the place. And, I could have sworn and that was the Cafe Membrio is down like, by across the street from Beerstein. Yeah, I could have sworn it was on. They were both on Willamette because the building looks so similar. They are on Willamette, but yeah, like a couple was, blocks. Oh, it's like 13th yeah. or 15th. I, I can't believe our herbs oh. went out of. I mean, maybe it was too good. Maybe it was too not. Well, like I said, I'm to, pretty sure the sandwiches were like fourteen dollars. Yeah, I, like I got like dumplings there one day. Like, I, I remember a friend had a coupon and, and it was like three dollars off, and it was like an eleven dollars sandwich, and I was like, I can't use this coupon. I'm in high school. I can't afford this. Well, another place that's closing is called uh, El Patron Origines. Don't know what that is. Never heard. Apparently, of it. it's one of Eugene's few uh, Peruvian restaurants. Hmm. Oh, that's right, sad. right near Falling Sky Delicatessen. But you know what? They still got the the Peruvian uh, at the yeah. uh, Saturday market, and that's pretty good. So, hey, what? I think they do the Peruvian at the. You're thinking of um, Mar Marty's Peruvian? I, yeah, something called? like that. I don't know what it's called, but they got it. Saturday I don't market. know any of those names, even though I worked there for like seven years. <laughs> what did just... you, you do at Country Fair? What crew or what what booth? At Country Fair or at Saturday Market? Both. Ooh, both. At Saturday Market, I do the Blazing Chef, which is the fish and chips booth. So for... wait, hold on. I could have sworn was Blazing Salad or those related? Is that just nope. a different thing? Totally just, unrelated. Just two, two I mean, is the separate... Blazing Chef new? I feel like I've never heard of that. The Blazing before. Chef has been at the Saturday Market for like fifteen years, but they don't go to the uh, wait, country fair. They've had fish and chips at the Saturday Market for fifteen years. Oh uh, yeah, and I'd... I've been there for half of them. 
I mean, I'm well, not there anymore. I mean, clearly I'd never met you because I didn't know there was a fish yeah. and chips place. Where – in location okay, so to booths I know. If you're standing – Give me like I'm at am I at main stage? Where am I? You're at? Okay, no no no. This is at the Saturday market, not the country fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the main stage at the Saturday market. The, well, the only stage. The only stage. So if you're they standing there stage. like behind there's like the tables under the big tent in mm-hmm. front of the stage. If you're standing right behind them mm-hmm. and you look to your right, yeah. the blazing chef is the first booth on your right, like closest They're to closest the stage. Closest to the stage. Wait. Right across the way from Dana's. It's stage oh, left. Oh, it's the other side of Rita's. Okay, because I was thinking Rita's yeah. was the first booth. Okay. Wow. I, yeah, I guess I just never noticed mm-hmm. you guys were there. Yeah, they do. Well, we do. They do. I mean, Are they the one that does the french fries? Because I know. Okay. They, they do them fresh. Okay. Twice I, fried. I had seen people with french fries at Saturday Market, but I thought that was like a newer thing. Uh, I, do you want to pop into a real I quick got, break here? We're going to pop into a real quick yeah, break, uh, and then we're going to do whichever segment. What was the segment we had left? Oh, the Wait. top five pizza restaurants in Eugene and or surrounding Lane County areas. Welcome back. And we had a little bit of a side conversation during the break. Uh, we got talking about fair again. And and then we got talking, you know, and our guest, Derek, says he knows every booth at Saturday Market. And here's what I want to know. I haven't been in a while, but I keep hearing this rumor 
the tofu palace is gone and i yep, I, I believe gone. that but here's the thing how do i get a palace cooler you have to go get one at fair but they're still there at fair yeah okay yeah uh when toby she didn't want to do it anymore and her son didn't want to do it either and, and so she, there was nobody to take she over so she me. just like she was just like fuck it dude i missed their breakfast plate that was my dude. go-to hangover cure when i had to be there at, that bagel. i got like five hours of sleep after drinking like a 12 pack like yeah it was the best dan well, I, I was gonna say I think Lars Lars's family has a question. Is Dana a guy oh, yeah. or a lady? My mother Dana is the man. Mm-hmm. Colleen is the woman. See, my mother came into the studio when we were recording the other day and she's like, I think Dana's a guy and I was like, Well, Dana Heitman from uh, Ch- uh Cherry Pop Cherry Pop and Daddy's is a guy, but that wasn't the Dana she was talking about. Yeah. I always thought Dana was a lady. I don't know. And yeah, I don't know. Is that is that sexist of us? Yeah. Uh, because of the cheesecake? Isn't it, it's like Scandinavian Spaked goods. Let me ask you this. Sasha, guy or girl? So, uh, guy. guy girl. I've, I've because i i grew or like i went to school with people guys from russia and oh. the brother was sasha but it's also it's a nickname for alexander oh okay. i also had a math teacher at the uvo who was from russia and his name was alex, oh, so alex you, but you know all by these. sasha I'm yeah, gonna, i knew a just a girl who was sasha in high school so i'm gonna give you one more you know one. give okay. it to us one last one and i'm gonna say three two one and then you say either guy or girl okay kelly three two one Both. girl but I'm, also both. Yeah, I've, I've heard of. I've met. I've met a lot of girls in person who are Kelly. But there's also a vendor who I work with at work who's named Kelly. You just call me. I like, actually hey, have like Kelly? a long list in my head of like the both sex names. Mm-hmm. And on uh, Wesley, which is usually a guy's name, mm-hmm. yeah. I always thought was a girl's name because the only Wesley I knew growing up was a girl. That's interesting because I just met a female Wesley recently. I've never met a female Wesley, but I guess because of the Lee, kind of the mm-hmm. the Lee. Well, now let me ask you, Daniel. Before the break, you were telling us about businesses that have gone out of town, and and I've got my guess, and I'm pretty sure Derek has his guess. So, do you want to let us guess, or are you just going to tell us? You can just tell us if you want. Mm, I, I like actually the, have no idea. I like the idea of you guessing which businesses, not out of town, out of out of business, or closed, or for whatever reason, stop doing what they're doing. Is it the barn light? <laughs> Is not the barn light. Derek, okay. do you have a guess? That was. Uh, I mean, okay, let me think about it. so. Barn lights, or not barn lights, uh, Wayward See, Lamb. I'm not the only one. Membrio, the the Peruvian place. Oh, uh, uh, Belly Taqueria. Well, Belly no. Taqueria did close a while ago. It's now now the Black Wolf Supper Club. Oh, okay. But the place I'm talking about is Tokyo Ramen. Oh, really? Oh, did we talk about that last time? Because there was like a new ramen place and then they were gone all of a sudden. Yeah, I mean, like, because Toshi's Ramen and Tokyo Ramen were, were pretty close. But from mm. what I hear, Tokyo Ramen was amazing. That's what I heard, too. And honestly, I've always felt Toshi's Ramen is overrated. That's, that's it's what I... really basic, mm. bland. I know for a fact it's just like MSG. Yeah, oh, for sure. It has to be. And I, I felt that way. I mean, I like Toshi's for what it is, but everyone I've ever talked to who's had authentic ramen has said it's not close. And I've that's had, what I, I want authentic ramen. I've made better ramen at my house. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Well, you know, I was reading that on Reddit the other day. They were talking about, you know, like with with uh, Asian food, they're like, yeah, the best bet is probably that you make, like you probably make it better at home than you're going to get even in a nice restaurant, which is crazy. But, yeah, I did like the whole hard boiled egg or soft boiled egg. Yeah, soft boiled. Yeah, you got to get that running uh, yolk. I did bacon, you know, mm-hmm. uh, mushrooms, scallions, garlic. Did you now? Did you um, make your own noodles or your no, own? No, I actually just used top ramen. I oh, used like cool. a very little bit of the powder oh, yeah. and then soy sauce and sesame seed oil. So his has MSG too. Yeah, no, I was going to say that's true. That's <laughs> the thing though that people do. Like my friend, my friend does it as well. Uh, mm-hmm. You basically take cheap top ramen and you enhance it with like. Real onions, oh, real, sure. real slices of ham, an egg, mm-hmm. a little like your own spice paste. Mm-hmm. Egg I've done paste. egg drop top ramen before, which is not the the soft boiled egg. It's just you just drop an egg in on the noodles and it cooks in with it. Um, that works really well. And I've heard I've never done it myself, but I've heard of people doing like uh, top ramen pad thai, which is basically just like peanut butter and I don't know if there's like sugar or something, but they kind of turn it into a peanut mm-hmm. noodle. If you're gonna get your own, like if you love peanut sauce. I do. The best God. place to get it by far is Tell Sunrise. Me. Sunrise has pr- their own pre-made peanut sauce. Oh my God. Is it cheaper than like $2 for a tiny little cup? No, you get, you get a giant, you probably get about almost two cups worth for three ninety nine. which no, no, I know. Oh, you're cups, thinking. cup, cooking cups. Yeah. Cause then you get cooking like this cups. tiny little, like two no, ounce no, container you, for $4. You get basically you get a lot. like almost two cups worth of peanut sauce. Delicious. That's the sauce like, like you get it at, at I just like to make it you get like one of the small cans of coconut milk and then, Ooh, okay. and then just really good creamy peanut butter, salt, hot sauce. That's 
all you need. Soy sauce. There it is. Try it. Well, you seem to know a lot about food. So uh, we were talking earlier, and we were going to tell us what the restaurant that's closing is. Tokyo Ramen. Tokyo Ramen. Sorry, (laughs) I got distracted. Food. Derek. Yes. You love. I asked you before we recorded this. What food do you love? What food do you think you have? A good opinion on here. Also, Eugene. FYI, when you were messaging me about this, I was very drunk, so that's nice. what I had on my mind. <laughs> hey, that's how you have because it was to... after the Super Bowl. That's how you know. Mm-hmm. That's how you know. So you're going to give us your top before. Which beers did you drink at the Super Bowl? Because obviously they weren't uh, Pelican. Trash. I drank a lot of whiskey and I drank a lot of Citrus Mistress. Okay, so get called out, Pelican. Get called out. Yeah, on, I'm gonna I'm gonna tag them on Instagram. I'm gonna call them out for real. Call them out. Their beer's I, trash. I am a whiskey guy myself. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah, your dad gonna... was there. It was my great. dad was there? Yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, Your dad's shit. from Pennsylvania. Of course That's we were right. he was okay. at the Super Bowl party with my dad, who's also from Pennsylvania. <laughs> Derek. Yes. Derek. Top five pizza places in Eugene, Oregon. Now, this is fun. Mm-hmm. This is a callback. We did this in one of the two pilots for the show. And so Dan and I both had our list, and I don't remember. I think they were similar. I don't remember what they were, but I'm excited to hear. What, I kind of want to hear yours first. I'm, it's not going to change my opinion. Is it? Do, are yours already written? Yeah. Oh, I already have mine. Um, I... I don't honestly remember all of mine, but I know I had size, uh, Mezzaluna's mod pizza. I don't remember what the other, was it? Did I, I don't, I didn't, I might've put Domino's in there just cause it's real cheap and convenient. Yeah, mods worldwide though. Are we going to count that? Yeah. Well, I counted Domino's, you know, cause I mean, it wasn't just local pizza. It was just five not, best pizza not places. Not worldwide. I think it's nationwide, but yeah. Yeah. But so is Domino's. That's true. I I'd say I of put... the three like main pizza chains, Domino's is probably mm. the best one. Yeah. yeah for, like, for like, sure. cause you have like right here where we are. You have down the street. You have Domino's, Papa John's, Pizza, uh, Pizza, Hut. Pizza Hut, and Mod, mm-hmm. uh, and then you have um, of Market course, Choice. Pegasus, yeah, Market Choice and Pegasus. So of the three that deliver, Domino's is the best. Um, I do like the I like the flavor of Papa John's more, but it's just a lot more expensive. Yeah, you know, when and you get, you get fuck pizza. Papa John. I know, but also like I really like his pizza. Don't like his pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Look, his the people who worked there at this store in Eugene are not responsible for him being a dick. So I can either support them or not. I'll give, I'll give my top three in Eugene and no particular order. And I okay. will say size mm-hmm. Pegasus and Mezzaluna. Mezzaluna. Yeah. So we were pretty similar. I don't think I yeah. put Pegasus in my top five, but um, I think mod totally deserved to be in there. No mod mods a good deal. It's, 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 it's so unique that it's worth it. You know, it is a good deal. Yeah. Seven fifty is the least amount of money I'm going to spend when I eat yeah. out. But Derek, yeah. your top five starting. Okay. Number three. So I just want to, put an honorable mention because i'm going to focus on actual pizza places not mm-hmm. just places that make pizza because right, i feel yeah. like that's a different but i think sam bond's garage they actually do pretty good pizza that's good to know because mm-hmm. there are places that don't get credit for the pizza they make cornucopia on fifth and pearl i actually haven't had their their pizza, pizza. is legitimately good and i'm, I'm it's surprising never, for a burger joint i've never had their pizza i remember having the sam bond's pizza and not liking that but that was a long time it was before i could like i was it was before i could actually go in a bar at night so for sure, I haven't like compared it to other bar food, and a lot of bar food is trash. So I'm sure it's probably good, but um, and it might have gotten better. Oh, do you know what? I wonder if I had um the new Cosmic owner because their pizza is really good. Uh, since Cosmic they since they got oh, bought out, World the Pies. Sauce, World Pies I forgot about World good. Pies. Fuck. Hey, you said we weren't going to influence you. No, well, <laughs> you just reminded me about World Pies. I totally forgot. So I'm just, not going to include World Pies because I don't like that they're no longer on the Monroe location. That's fair. You're, this, give, you're giving honorable mention to Sam Bond's Garage Pizza. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Wait, does Pizza Research Institute, do they still exist? They're back. Yes. No, they they're, came back. They were gone. Now they're back. They're back. Yeah. I would never give them a top five slot because nope. it's like $6 a slice and it's yeah. like a three hour wait. Nope. Oh, no, but no. it is good. I did like it. It is. A, it's a fun novelty. It's fun. Yeah. There, there's only so many toppings you can put on pizza. I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, if you want to put pear or potato on pizza, like that, you should just make pizza at home. It's like we were talking yeah. about with the ramen. Like, just yeah. do it yourself. It's, if it's going to take an hour and a half, you could at least pay less than five dollars a slice. Yeah. But Top, number five, number uh, five, El Taglio's, which is on Thirteenth and yeah. Willamette, which is connected to Big City Gaming, and I like that place because. Uh, I go to Big City Gaming a lot because my friends own it, oh. and I've gotten to know a lot of those guys there. And I think they make good pizza, and they always they make fun, like combinations. Okay. Um, and we always bullshit with each other, and they're for like the price, it's pretty good. I don't think I've ever had Al Taglio's. Same with La Perla. They're... Never had a La Perla, oh, yeah. but La that Perla. place has been there for way long. Yeah. Well, I mean, it used to be the Pearl Street, uh, which was cool. You get like the 
No, it's like classic diner food. It used to be like the candy place. It used to be Ferrell's. Ferrell's, that's Ferrell, what it was Ferrell's called. Ferrell's ice cream, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. But then it was it was like a proper diner. Wasn't it a diner called Pearl Street? Or was it, was it just called Ferrell's? And I it's think called it, Ferrell's. I just it was, think of it, it was as Ferrell's, Ferrell's for a head. long time. My sister actually worked there. Mm. And they straight up, they, they were the place that had the giant Sunday with fireworks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. you went, they had like a motorcycle on the, yeah. the rest mm-hmm. of the place. Um, yeah, I, I've been to La Perla. La Perla is good. They do that kind of like flour on the bottom of the crust thing. I think it's supposed to be like authentic Italian. The only thing, it's not pizza by the slice, so you have to buy a whole pizza, and it's not super cheap. It's kind of like California Pizza Kitchen, so it's like if mm. you go in, which we don't have here, which I would love because, oh my god, that place is incredible. But um, if you go in wanting to get a whole pizza or split a pizza between three people, it's good. But, you know, it's like Mezzalunas is also on Pearl Street, and they do pizza by the slice, so it's kind of, if you want to go for a lunch, it's kind of awkward. You were saying, yeah. is it, I always get the pronunciation, El Tag. Oh, Taglios. Taglios. Or okay. ta- ta- yeah, it's uh, Taglio. What kind of style are they? They're like well, thin it's, crust? It's, it's, or Italian, crust. It's, probably, it's probably Taglio. Um, oh, fuck. What's his name? His name, the owner, his name is Nick. And he's, I'm pretty sure he's from New York. Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Okay. And that's why he does the very thin crust. Oh, sure. I'll try that then. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like when I'm there, I'm, I'm drinking beer at Big City Gaming and it's like mm-hmm. I've had a few and it's like, oh, pizza. It sounds pretty good. I'm, I'm reminded of uh, maybe pizza places that were here in the past couple of years that are no longer here. Are you going to include those in the list? No. Okay. Was it, uh, no. Are you speaking of one in particular? The granary. Oh, I, oh I forgot shit. The granary. I forgot about the granary. I thought yeah. you were going to talk about Benet, and Benet is on my shit list. Oh, I never had Benet. Oh. I've never Benet even is, heard of Benet. Benet. Fuck you, Benet. Get called out. Benet hasn't been around for like maybe six or seven years. Okay. But it was like, there was the first one was mm. where El Super Burrito is now. Oh, yeah. I and then they place. like spread out to like three other locations, yeah, yeah. and they all went under. Yep. It was shit pizza. It was one of the, like, mm-hmm. I I like to judge a slice of pizza by the the next day, like yeah. m- morning pizza. Yeah, leave it over. Terrible. Oh, that's terrible. the okay. worst. I don't think I ever had the pizza. I just had, like, the frozen, like, Italian dessert ice cream things they did. Shaved ice. Mm-hmm. Um, There was the one that used to be at the station. I think you told me it moved, but it's still around, which was, co- it was called World Flavors. Is that true? Did that move? You're thinking or, of World, World no, Pies. No, World Pies is different, because that's spelled W-H-I-R. This is World with W-O. Because it used to be at the bus station, there was like a bunch of Jamaican guys. But I've, um, why are you looking? Hmm. I've n- it was someone <laughs> else. Who okay, to. no, because because that's what happened in a previous podcast. You told me that was World World Pies, but World Pies owns Cosmic, and World Flavors uh, didn't. I don't know. They were there for was. like a year. They um, it's I don't know. It's one of those like probably the sushi bento box place now. Derek, what is your top? What is your number four on the top five? Number four, wow, Pegasus. Um, not because I I don't like them or like i think they're any less it's just the other ones i like more sure um used to go there all the time when i was a kid uh they do vegan pizzas they they're pretty i don't know like the I, the only one i've ever been to is the campus one and i've always I was like, say, have nostalgia for that place if you went there as a kid i'm like it has to be the campus yeah. one because that was one of those it's definitely older kind of mm-hmm. like wonderland which is no longer with us um where, rip yeah wonderland was great but it, it just it had that that feel of an older place. A lot yeah. of like wooden floors. Yep. A lot of wooden mm-hmm. exposed. I almost killed floors. myself at the Pegasus piece on campus. How? Uh, I was, in, this was actually in high school and I was there with my rugby team and I was sitting on one of the corner booths. And for those of you who haven't been there, the, the outer ring of the place is a little elevated. And so I was sitting mm-hmm. on the corner by the edge of it and I leaned back and my chair fell off and I fell and I looked up and the corner of the table was like, right above me so i must have missed the corner of the table oh. with the back of my spine by like Shit. inches wow that is crazy but they do good pizza yeah and i like being there it's a cool sure. place i like pegasus especially the campus location is is much nicer vibe than the south eugene one mm-hmm. it's it's stuffy and the wait is long yeah. i've never had their um i've never had their actual pizza i've had their calzones which are pretty good and i've had their salads which are good They're, it's like ten dollars for a salad and it's the kind of salad if you get it to go and add a couple toppings it's a really good salad but at that point you could have just bought some lettuce for like a dollar. Like, why are you paying twelve dollars? Well, they have a good lunch dollars? special, mm. a good slice and a salad deal. Mm. Okay. So, what's your number three, Derek? Give us number three. Uh, yeah. Size. There size. it is. Yeah, size in the top um, three. You got to put it there. It's mostly for nostalgia because I used to live like a few blocks away in high school, and mm-hmm. I would just walk the size and get high, and then eat a bunch of pizza. And well, then they got the go garlic home. nuts that you just add. Yeah, the it, was, it was like when you, you get, pay for pineapple, they fuck you up with pineapple. It was like which is five bucks for two slices and a soda, and I'd just get like a dollar worth of knots, and I'd. To hang out and yeah size is so good and whenever there's someone who complains about there's a lot of people people from new york will move to eugene then mm-hmm. complain they're like it's not it's not new york so what does it matter and it's like go to go to size because it's the closest thing you'll get to mm-hmm. like 
the, your New York style pizza. Yeah. And it's really good. And it's cheap. The one thing I will say is that I feel like the quality like has gone down in the last sure. years. When I was at the U of O, I would go there often. And um, it just wasn't the same. I, I kind of, I've always thought it was the high turnover rate. Like mm-hmm. back in high school, it was like a lot of my friends worked there. A lot of people who like, you know, grew up with it. So they kind of knew what it was. And They're people who were passionate had, about it. Well, and like, and people who, yeah, people who were passionate about it, people who, who had no, knew what it tasted like before. Mm-hmm. And people who, they'd been there for a while. And now it's like every time I'm in there, there's somebody new, somebody different. And so oh, I think okay. it's just like, well, and there's probably an element of nostalgia, and the prices have gone yeah. up, so it's yeah. definitely disappointing. It's like you know, it's like a dollar to add a topping now, and you're like, yeah. that's kind of a lot. Um, but I, I like size. I think size is pretty good. It's like you know, one of the other ones. I don't think we talked about it as I don't think it was top five for me, but Pizza Pipeline. You know, they used to do three slices and a soda for three dollars. Uh-huh. Now that's like five dollars. It was a crazy yeah. deal. But it was a crazy yeah. deal. And the thing is, like, I know it's trash pizza. It was always trash pizza. But in high school or no middle school, that was awesome for me. You know, having that for lunch was excellent so to have the nostalgia i i would not want to pay five dollars for three of their slices and a soda now yeah but back then it was a huge help so yeah um, definitely and same. they have that fish tank in their lobby i don't what i never saw they the have fish a fish tank. tank in the waiting is that new Dude, that place isn't there anymore they moved out of the downtown location for real yeah. i didn't even know that where are oh. they now uh the only one i think is up on a coburg somewhere yeah i didn't know or that in... either when i was there they Oakway. didn't have a fish tank but they had like uh some kind of arcade machine i don't remember what mm-hmm. the game was but yeah, I think they I think they had both of those last time I was there. They just all they had was like a bench you could fit two people on, but you'd have like five middle and high schoolers yeah. in there waiting yeah. for them. So you're always like, Well, I guess I'm not eating here. Derek, what is your number two? We're getting up there. Uh up Bartolotti's, there. the little pizza cart over here on Friendly. Oh, you know what? We've had someone else recommend that. Was it Geronimo or Cassidy? Someone really uh, liked it. Probably I, Geronimo. Geronimo. I hadn't had it fresh until mm-hmm. the other night. And my roommates brought it home, and like it was like half cheese, half like barbecue chicken, bacon, mm. caramelized onion. And I'm not usually a fan of barbecue chicken pizza, but that was like one of the best slices of pizza I've ever had. Put that on my list. Yeah, and it's just like a small food cart. Yeah, like you know how there's the friendly street market, and then right across the street is like that like food plaza. There's like I, a Thai place, I don't a make cider it to, place. I don't make it to friendly enough. I know uh, Cassidy yeah, mentioned I know that last episode. Place. She mentioned cider licious. Is that cider? Part is it? They are yeah. really, they are really putting good stuff in that neighborhood. Yeah. Ever since Fix, Flix and Picks closed, it felt like they were just not going to do anything there. Dude, I love Flix and Picks. I mean, yeah, I, oh, it's Dennis. also like one of those like up and coming. Mm-hmm. Are they getting gentrified? Gentrified. Oh, are they going to have an acronym ritzy. of what? Like instead of instead the of wit. friendly, if we like fro froco, like hey, <laughs> <laughs> we're over here in the froco neighborhood. Yeah, I had Doco recently. Um, oh it's, it's shit. good it's you know what shit. it's good it is if it's 3 a.m maybe oh my god i wasn't even drunk and i had it ariel brought me wow. some home after she was over doko it was amazing okay uh like here we are delivery. guys we've made it to number one of the pizza list. give us your best pizza Dude. uh mezzaluna nice yeah. yeah that was my number one too it's i fucking love out. mezzaluna yeah five. i'm so i know you know who i hate you know who i hate I hate fucking sizzle pie. Like, get out of here. Fuck, we, don't need, okay, we don't need your fuck Portland sizzle trash. Pie. Yeah. Fuck your... Voodoo Donuts. Fuck Killer Burger. And fuck Little Portland. And That's wait, what I call it. Wow, is okay. Killer Burger from Portland? I yep. didn't know that. And also, and you can't forget, and this is the one I'm really upset that you forgot, the fucking Barn Light. Also from Portland. <laughs> <laughs> barn Light has two locations. You know that, right? Yeah, one's in Portland. No, there's two in Eugene. In Eugene, oh, yeah. Fuck that shit. Uh, I will say um, they do actually have, Sizzle Pie has a good uh, vegan salad. I, the like one, with or vegan ranch uh, the, salads, the, obviously. The vegan ranch. The is, one yeah, I tell yeah, the sure. one thing I say because in the vegan or the pizza and the yeah. salad is that like if you're drunk it's because yeah. Mezzalunas does like five, four or five slices and they're always different, which is awesome. Yeah, they'll usually have a vegetarian slice or two, but sometimes it's just like cheese. They do three regular, three vegetarian, three vegan every day. Like I, I applaud them for having nine slice choices. That's awesome, but they play their music at literally 120 decibels, and you will go deaf if you stand. <laughs> That's his in there. main issue. Yeah, it's. I mean, one, the pizza Caesar. It's not good pizza, and two, I'm not going to damage my ears for your shit pizza. Yeah, no, my, my opinion. Their Maybe pizza, I would do it for Pizza Pipeline. Their pizza is fine, but it is so hyped. Like people tell me, like, it's overrated. Oh, let's go. Let's go to Sizzle Pie. I'm like, why? I don't want to pay 4.75 for a slice of pepperoni. That's just okay. There's like mm-hmm. two slices of pepperoni on it too. You know? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, Mezzaluna. I really applaud their crust. It's like that yeah. chewy baguette mm. like 
holds up. And then their garlic knots and their garlic mozzarella knots are so good. No, it is. You know what? You know and their like salads are huge. You get a medium salad, like yeah. three people can eat that. Oh yeah. Awesome. I- Sorry, go for no, it. No, you, you go for it. I, I'll... My big thing, and I know that you could probably do this anywhere, but Mezzaluna is one of the first places that, like, I, I ate there for lunch a lot, also in middle school, but when I could afford more than Pizza Pipeline. And one thing they had um, was, you know, I like pineapple on pizza, so I would get whichever slice of the day had pineapple, but sometimes they wouldn't have one. And they learned that I liked that, and they're like, we can just put pineapple on a regular slice for 25 cents. And they did. And not only did they put it on, because they were reheating it, they put it on, but they put cheese over it. So, like, mm, it really, yeah. like, melted. It stayed on there. Yeah, they yeah. put, they I put appreciate effort that kind of into it, too. and they suggested it. And it's yeah. a cool thing. I mean, yeah. you, I don't know. I don't think anywhere else if you add a topping, they're going to add extra. Size won't do that. They're not yeah. going to add extra cheese for you. Um, I, I also really appreciate. So, like, you know, if, if you're walking in, they have mm-hmm. the decals on the window that say Mezzaluna. Mm-hmm. So, if you're on the inside, though, if you read it from right to left or left to right, it also says anal assum. Oh my god. <laughs> That's the... I thought you were going to say something different like, oh, they really do this something with oregano. You're like, no, no. <laughs> Mezzaluna backwards. I, I have a friend who, who used to go to Mezzaluna like spiritually and uh, he would go there and one time... Wait, spiritually or re- spiritually? religiously? I, gotta, I, gotta I, mess, I religiously, but you know what? Spiritually. And he, it's he a went, spiritual experience. He went there so often and he tipped them so well that like one time he got a pizza and the guy at the counter said to him, he's like, hey man, I think we may be overcooked a little bit. I looked at it, it was fine and he's like, do you just want a free one? Like, we, we feel really bad because we, we overcooked a little bit. We'll, we'll give you a free one. And my friend's like, sure. And then they give us, let us keep both. And it's just like, they really appreciate their customers. Yeah. Whereas Sizzle Pie, they couldn't give less of a fuck. Yeah. You know what? And I'll tell you what. There's I mean, a it's guy... like, sorry. Oh, sorry. No, 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 I interrupted you. Your thing's on Mesaluna's, mine's not. So you do. No, your yours, mine is also on. Oh, okay. We're going to change subject, Dan. On the subject of, of tipping well. At, we've talked about the Rons over here before. I go there often. I tip them pretty well. There's one guy who knows. He gives me a third scoop of Mac salad when I come in. Holy shit! It's a little thing, but it makes one. It makes me fatter, and two, <laughs> I'm just happy. I just like it. I like the Mac salad. Yeah, Mezzaluna is, or yeah, Mezzaluna is one of those places. Like, I always see the same people working there, and like for the last few years, and it's like clearly mm-hmm. they give a shit, and like the oh, owners sure. give a shit. But mm-hmm. like, Pie, it's like I know so many people who were there for like months at it, like a couple months, and a couple mm-hmm. months, and like. Just like hearing stories, like they don't give a shit about the no. pizza. They don't give a shit about what's going on there. It's just a job for them. And they're piggybacking mm-hmm. off a Portland brand. Yeah. Which mm-hmm. is, I don't, here's the thing. I love, I actually really like Killer Burger, even though I know that it is a Portland chain. And like that one, I, 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 but we, but you know what? We didn't have a burger place. We had like, we, you could get a $12 burger at like Ooh. a couple of the breweries, but just a place that does like a, you know, not a twelve fucking dollar. Although I guess the burgers have gone up in price. They got rid of the killer hour special. So you know what? Fuck no, oh, fuck those guys. Yeah. They got rid of that. Best, yeah. my favorite burger is Little Big Burger. Oh, you you work right next to Little yeah, Big. I'm burger. not a huge fan. I my problem is that oh, I that's just, Portland. I just think they're. Is it? It is Portland. Oh. Yeah. I thought it was a bigger chain than that. I but, I thought it was bigger. I assumed it was bigger. My problem is that they're just little burgers. They could just call it mm. Slider. Slider Little Burger. They're not yeah. big burgers. I always have to buy two, big and slice. I have to buy fries, and I have to buy drinks, and there's not a combo. So it comes out to like thirteen dollars. That's true. I get a discount because of where but I work. But those truffle oil fries are so oh, good. I just I I don't know. I feel like they're overhyped. I, I think just feel like fries to me. I like they flavor. have the, the Portland ketchup code, the spicy ketchup. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Their their flavors on point. I just I honestly get heartburn. I know it's in the name, but I wish their burgers were just a little bit bigger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah it's, cool. Put it is, two burger patties and make it one big the, burger. That's the problem. Yeah. It's it's because it's Here's so it's so small in like radius that I'm I it's only like four bites no matter how tall it is. And I'll I'll buy a second burger, but two burgers and fries is way too much food, and I need like a burger and a half. Mm. So they like they really fuck with my stomach. Well, you know what, you know what it sounds like? It sounds like we're gonna close this episode up, but on yeah, the next we're, we're on the next episode, we love to have you back. Top Dope. five burger places. Okay. Yes, has to be. Has let's to do be. it. On the next episode, we're reading goddamn no, Craigslist no, no, no. personal. On the next episode with Derek. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can't you can't do that. Here's the thing, Dan. It's not every other week. You made them wait a month for this Listen, now. They no, have to wait no a month. One, no one takes heed of our promises. They don't. <laughs> I do. You do. I know. Cassidy does. Uh, two of your very, f- I'm not going to say close friends. I don't feel close to you. Very friends are upset about this. I think it's just you, though. Cass, I talked to Cass. She's <laughs> fine. Too, she's in I'm a fine emotional friends. state about that. <laughs> okay, well. All right, well. Um, I'm sorry that she's so perfect. We're going we're gonna to close out with plugs. I'm just going to say um, I'm usually a cornucopia drink a draw every monday monday at 9 p.m, at 9 PM. i'm not going to be for the next two on mondays fifth? but that's okay because i assume so thank you that's okay dan because this airs after those mondays oh that's good uh that's so good. will you be in town this is going to air next friday will you be in town after that i'll be back february 22nd february i don't know what that is like two weeks from now 
Uh, fuck me. I don't know. I don't know if he'll be there. He might be at Drink and Draw if it's after. Just go. February you'll 22nd. find out yeah, when you get there. Monday's at nine. Cornucopia. Well, though you might not know what he looks like. Um. Oh, he's a ginger. With okay, glasses. glasses. He's a ginger a with glasses. And generic. Look like a hipster. He looks right. like how he sounds. He's really got the voice. <laughs> of I really his face. I really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's your, what are you gonna plug? Oh well, you know what? I don't have any events going on, but I've got a lot of social media. If you're trying to find me, it's so easy. Lars in the studio. Lars in the studio at Gmail. SoundCloud.com slash Lars in the studio. On YouTube, I vlog sometimes. You guessed it, Lars in the studio. And on Instagram, where we always post about all the new shows, Lars in the studio. If you're listening to this, and that probably means you're Cassidy. And Cassidy, if you haven't <laughs> listened to a part of the art yet, check it out. It's really good. We're stumbling through finding ourselves, uh, you know, as host on this show. So the first couple episodes are a little awkward, but episode five was awesome. Episode six, which is going to air, will have aired by the time you hear this, is incredible. Um, and the episode that will air two days after this episode, uh, Thomas and I are going to sit down. He's going to teach me how to rap. He wants to do that. I don't know how to rap. It's going to it's gonna be a learning process. We're going to write a rap song. We're going to rap that rap song. We're probably going to not make a beat. We'll use someone else's beat. But it's going to be a good time. And Derek, what do you got to plug? Uh, can I plug two things? Go no. for it. Uh, Big City Gaming. Because hey. they're rad. They have 32 mm-hmm. taps, beer, ciders, CBD sodas, like kombucha. 32 taps? Yep. That's a lot. And any, if you buy a beer, you can play video games for free. That's right. And do they still have, is the pizza place still right next door? Al Taglio. Al, that's the that's one. where it is. Okay. Damn right it is. Yeah, it's right next door. <laughs> it's even not listening. even next door. It's in the same, like yeah, they blew out the like, wall. Yeah. I, think so. I was picturing more of like next to level up when you said mm-hmm. something about gaming. Okay, so then, yeah, I, I have no excuse not to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's your second plug? Uh, Blazing Chef, duh. Blazing well, Chef. Best fish and chips in town. When is Saturday market coming back? So uh, it's always the first weekend of April. First well, that's smart because it's, it has been a very cold February since the KLCC <laughs> Brute Fest. You have. And you can find Derek as well on Instagram if you want. He is on Instagram with a name. It is Derek. No spaces, all lowercase. Uh, look for us? the weird eyes. Look for the weird eyes. Look for the weird eyes. And, oh, Dan Cost is on Instagram. That's at right. Dan Cost, Dan Cost. That's K-O-S-S. You, you do, do it, it twice. twice. <laughs> <And> <laughs> oh, he's also on my Instagram as my one of my favorite Instagram account is every time I flush. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> he, he, for that. he runs several different Instagrams. I have many different Instagram accounts. I have every time I flush is every time I take a poop, I take a selfie. Uh Dan Koss, here's what he does. He does social media, he does graphic design. If you want to hire him, I'll tell you right now you probably can't afford him, but you should try it. <laughs> I've been animating a sex ed video. I've been not animating sex. Well, it'll be out in a few weeks or such. Oh, well, th- um, thank you. Okay, and you're going to catch, uh, follow this podcast at Lars in the Studio on Instagram. Yep, on SoundCloud. If you're if you're listening on iTunes, but you want to get an Android phone, it's in Google Play too. It Jesus. was actually in both of them at the same time. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Or vice versa. I don't care. Okay. Look, here's the deal. If you have a Windows mobile phone, kill yourself. In the show. Thank you. <laughs> show. Thank you. Show. Thank you. Show. Thank you. Show. Thank you. Joe, thank you. Joe, thank you. Joe, thank you. Joe, thank you.